Today we're going to talk a little bit more about families and we're going to start off by talking about families in the uh, Rosales. These are, I'm going to talk about families in order of how they're presented in Florida, the Pacific Northwest. So this will be tailored specifically to plants of the Northwest, but we'll start at the angiosperm phylogeny website page. In a previous video, we talked through to the Rosaceae because they have some shared characters with some ancestral flowering plants. Um, and there's some other important families for Northwest shrubs in particular that are represented in this tree in the Rosales, the Ramnaceae and the Eliagnaceae, then the Olmaceae, uh, Cannabaceae, uh, Moraceae, and Urticaceae. Those are all really interesting families for us. Let's start with Eliagnaceae. The angiosperm phylogeny group gives us a lot of information in text, including a floral formula that tells us something about uh, how uh, these families work um, or what they're, how their uh, flowers are structured. Um, these are worth digging into if you're new to that. I'm going to click over to the Burke Herbarium uh, family list uh, because I find for the Northwest this is a really nice reference to combine with what you find in flora of the Pacific Northwest. Let's go to Eliagnaceae and uh, talk about a few interesting members of this family. One common on the member of the family on the east side that you may be familiar with is Russian olive. Russian olive is an invasive plant that grows especially um, in watercourses in on the east side of the Cascades in eastern Washington. Um, a really important important species in terms of being an invasive that can dominate riparian areas. And it's in the Eliagnaceae, it's uh, Eliagnus angustifolia. Um, sometimes folks are more uh, familiar with uh, Shepherdia canadensis. This is an interesting um, species. It's a species that you'll often find in more dry environments. You can find it up at the north end of the Olympic Peninsula, on um, the islands and then throughout eastern Washington. This species is nice to focus on for Eliagnaceae because it has a characteristic that is common in the Eliagnaceae, which is the presence of lepidote scales. And so these are these little scales that are occurring along the stem, um, which is very typical of many plants in, um, in this group. Closely related family is the Ramnaceae. Um, Ramnaceae are very important shrubs. Um, again, important shrubs, especially on the east side for us uh, here in the Pacific Northwest. Some of the really important families in the or genera in the Ramnaceae for us include Ceanothus, Frangula, and, uh, and Ramnus. Frangula is, um, a uh, genus that is really common in our forests uh, on the west side. Ceanothus is more common on the east side and can be a nitrogen fixing um, shrub. Let's take a look at these uh, in the Burke Herbarium site. Within our region, we generally have three genera. We've got about eight species and um, that's that's enough to um, keep you busy thinking about the Ramnaceae, but it's a small enough number that you can know all these species um, relatively well, especially because there are just a few of them that are really common. So Frangula persiana in particular is Cascara. This is a plant that you're going to find all over our forests, um, generally in low abundance, um, but it's widely distributed. So you find it all throughout the forest. You recognize Cascara by the um, deep um, veination in the leaves. It's uh, very obvious. The flowers are very nondescript, but really very beautiful when you uh, take a close look at them. Um, so it's worth taking the time to go uh, find some cascara flowers as they begin to bloom, which should be happening in early spring. Ceanothus velutinus is probably our most common 
uh, ceanothus that you'll find on the east side and occasionally here on the west side in dry patches. Um, so you'll see it sometimes in the rain shadow of the Olympics, uh, but more commonly you'll find it on the east side. A really important shrub species uh, for the east side and known to be a nitrogen fixer. There are a number of other species of Ceanothus that are less common, uh, but you can also find them around our region and they're worth your attention. In another branch of the Rosales, we have the Olmaceae, Can Can uh, Cannabaceae, uh, Moraceae, and Urticaceae. Urticaceae may be one of the, one of the genera that's um, most important for you when you're uh, knocking about in the wild, because of course this contains uh, stinging nettle. The Olmaceae is the Olm the elm family, and uh, this is worth knowing. And of course we have some members of the Olmaceae in our region. Only one genera with four species, and you're probably most likely to run into these. Uh, in semi-urban uh, areas where we have these introduced species uh, will be uh, abundant. When it comes to native species though, urticaceae uh, leaves a very strong impression, especially urtica dioca. Um, this is our most common stinging nettle that you find throughout. So it's also in the rosales. Um, you're going to be more familiar with um, the uh, sensation of urtica, uh, of urtica dioica coming in contact with your um, skin after you've encountered urtica dioica. Um, you may not be memorable as you're brushing up against it, but a second later, it's very memorable and will stick with you. Um, what to say about this one? The leaves of this are opposite and you, Often within family, um, it can be consistent that leaves are either alternate or opposite. A lot of vegetative characters are very plastic uh, within a family and are not generally well conserved, but some are. And um, the presence of opposite leaves tends to be one of those characters that can be conserved reliably within a family. And that's the case here. All right, um, the cannabacy, of course, um, we do have naturalized cannabis um, that, can, that can grow. Cannabacy is uh, within the rosales. Um, so it may be important for you to um, know that one in case you run into it out in the field. The Moraceae is an interesting group, um, which we don't run into super often in our region, but there are a couple important species like uh, Osage Orange, uh, which is commonly planted in, in and around suburban habitats in our area. It's frequently touted as a, uh, uh, an interesting plant, even though it's introduced. So the mulberry family is generally introduced in our region, but we have some interesting members for sure. Okay, and with that, we will um, move out of the Rosales and into um, our next branch and uh, our, our next group of families in Florida, the Pacific Northwest. The two most important next families that we'll come in contact with, or three, are all major tree um, families. We'll uh, talk about the Phagaceae the Juglandaceae and the Betulaceae.